as you heard it in the uh, first press conference, which we also had in Delhi in September and so, uh, ITB was happy to, to, to use the GITM uh, to organize a second conference on LGBT tourism and it would have been the second ever in India after the one we had organized in Delhi in January. And uh, we uh, organized those seminars together with uh, Thomas Tour, Diversity Management. He will introduce himself uh, shortly, Thomas. And um, so we were very happy that this is going to happen because a rising number of uh, Indian players really want to engage in the dynamical growing market in this niche market and want to learn how to sensibly approach this clientele. So that's why we had decided to, to hold this conference here at GITM because the GITM is an international travel market. Um, and Goa is of course one of the most attractive and beautiful travel destinations in India. So um, yeah, that was the plan. But um, yesterday we heard that the seminar had to be cancelled. It had to be cancelled because uh, some people felt that we would hurt their feelings and uh, this is why we invited you here to tell you that this of course was not our attention. So we have prepared a, a joint statement of ITB Berlin and Tom Montour, uh, Diversity Tourism, um, which we had read out already in, in the seminar room. But uh, as not all of you have been there, so I'm going to read it out again. Um, we are very sorry to hear that the seminar today had been cancelled. And we want to state that we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, neither do we want to promote anything sleeky or non-decent. We do respect cultural diversity, diversity and we do not want to import anything unwanted to the world. We respect your customs and culture. And there is no cultural offense, nor cultural imperialism or whatever involved. We only planned to inform, as I said, the tourism industry gathered here at GITM, an international platform, about one of our 15 travel segments which we have at ITB, ITB Berlin. And the LGBT um, segment is really emerging and the LGBT customers is a consumer group with huge, um, with a good income and the whole market has huge growing possibilities. But they have to be handled right and respected as any other client. So we do not discriminate any of our consumer groups at ITB. To us, cultural diversity means to be tolerant, to speak out against any racial or gender discrimination, and to respect every human being. In fact, it's a matter of human rights and tourism. As we also speak out against any sexual exploitation of children and women in tourism, and have signed the International Code of Conduct against it. Homosexuality has been decriminalized in India with the court judgment in 2009, and that's why we thought it would be possible to have this second seminar here in India, because we didn't have the problems in Delhi. Uh, please let me make clear that when we give an insight in this special international market segment, we do not promote any sexual approach, nor ask anybody to become part of it. We inform and discuss, as we do with every other travel segment, like youth travel, best nature travel, or adventure travel. Nor have we ever promoted Goa as a special LGBT destination or whatever. Allow me to say that it is a total misunderstanding of the subject and a prejudice to think and express that LGBT tourism has anything to do with drugs, sex tourism, escort services, or, and I really protest deeply against this, pedophile practices. Not any more than any heterosexual tourism group would have to do or would not have to do with it. And I please ask you to give this a thought. And yeah, thank you for giving us the platform to clear our point of view. So I think 
uh, if you have any questions. Um, Maybe I say something. And you should so, first okay. please introduce yourself and then we are open for questions. Yes, okay, my name is Thomas Bumkes. I'm from, my company is Diversity Tourism. We are based in Munich, Germany, and we are partnered with ITB Berlin. We are a marketing and consultancy company working in uh, niche tourism segment and we are specialized in gay tourism as well. That's why we partnered with ITB Berlin and during uh, conferences and seminars around the world. And I'm in that business, I'm working in this business for uh, 15 years already and I was also, uh, I'm a former director of the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association based in Fort Lauderdale, which represents over 2,000 uh, uh, destinations, hotels, airlines in the world who are working in this uh, travel segment worldwide. Um, and I was invited here to speak about this uh, tourism and uh, not about to talk about Goa in, because I have no idea about Goa tourism. I'm here for the first time. I just want to give the, uh, uh, the people here an idea about this uh, segment. And it's very important when you talk about GLBT tourism, what is it, what is it really in fact? It says gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, but mostly is people work in the gay segment for gay men or lesbian women. So we don't have, for example, that many bisexual or transgender people really traveling. And so and you have to understand this market when you work, when you want to work there successfully in it there. And we do this with our platform Tom on Tour. We have for this uh, for this platform. And yeah, that was what I wanted to talk here, just to, to give awareness for this market and to educate the people that it's nothing bad with this tourism and this, uh, this target group have just some speci uh, specific needs and requirements like all other target groups like best ager, family travel or adventure travel, so it's nothing bad. And it's not, gay tourism is not all about that we want to create products for, that mar for this market and that finally gay and lesbian people can travel around this world. That's totally wrong. Gay and lesbian people travel they travel anyway, if Goa wants to have this or not, and they come to Goa since years, they, they do this. You can close your eyes and say, no, we don't want to have this, but you have it here. And it's all around the world. And I saw a lot of uh, gay couples in Goa here already. And you will not mention them because they are really uh, regular tourists like everybody else. They spend a lot of money and usually they spend more money than uh, regular people because you have to, this is the double income, no kids uh, people, they have, uh, both people work like gay men, they both work, they have no children and number one is what they spend their money is they spend their money in tourism, they travel around the world, they stay in four and five star luxury hotels and they're really, um, really nice tourists and all the uh, hotels and destinations I work with globally, they are really happy to have these guests because they are really nice guests, they uh, they think about the culture when they go to a different destination. They, they want to learn what this destination is all about. They're not the, the troublemaker tourists. They're not, you don't see them. They're really great tourists. And that was why I wanted to talk and teach and educate the people. So, yeah, that's what it's I all think about. I yeah, can I also say it again. There is, there is a misunderstanding where people think when we talk about gay and lesbian tourism that uh, it becomes to arranging sexual arrangements or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. They are just traveling like anybody else. 46% of the American travelers, they are traveling with their partner. So they just go do sightseeing, uh, go and visit theaters. They're, I mean, they're spending a lot of money on cultural uh, uh, things. So. And I would say they respect the culture. Yeah, the culture. only thing, yeah, they, they respect the culture, but the only thing which is different why we talk about it is that, of course, there are special needs, like uh, there has to be cultural, uh, cultural environment, uh, there have to be good hotels, there have to be boutique hotels, there have to be special things which those client, this clientele likes. But that's all it's about. And another thing why we have to talk about it and why we talk about it at ITB and have workshops on LGBT tourism internationally since three years is because uh, people who want to work with this very uh, valuable clientele have to learn certain things. They have to respect them. There are some things when people come and want to check in in a hotel and the hotel staff is not trained properly, they might say, <coughs> You know, do stupid things. And this is all about that you learn to respect yeah. this customer as any other customer in the world. 
and and you just have to train your your personnel to respect them as any other person and with, to treat with the same courtesy as any other client. That's all it's about. And when we talk in our seminar sessions um, <clears throat> about how to educate your staff, yeah, you get a lot of huge examples internationally. Hyatt International, we're hosted by Hyatt here. Hyatt International has a global uh, policy uh, to welcome LGBT tourism and they treat their staff very good as well. So that's a global policy. Hyatt International, Hilton, Marriott, all the big hotel groups are following. So that's nothing which has to do something with, with the goal and culture. We just talk about a, a, a segment which has been established since many years in tourism. And IGLTA, the International, Chamber, uh, the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association, where I'm also a board member now, ITB has been called a board member too, is member of UNWTO. So it's all recognized internationally in the whole tourism world. And there's nothing sleeky or anything about it. It's just about respecting a certain customer group and providing what they need. And they don't need any sexual escorts. They need um, an infrastructure with cultural events and very good high-priced hotels. And I think that is why we need to talk in, in destinations like India about this, because I think there is not so much knowledge here, and that is why we are come here. Yeah. Even though uh, people ask me, what is gay-friendly? What is a gay-friendly destination or a gay-friendly hotel? It's very easy to answer that question. You don't need to be gay-friendly. You need to be friendly to all your mm -hmm. clients, to all your guests. Just treat them equally. So, for example, when two men check in in a hotel, Ask them what they want. Do you want one room? Do you want two beds? Do you want one bed? Ask them because you don't know. Are these two men gay? They could be family. They could be brothers. They could be colleagues from uh, the company and they just buy, uh, bring them uh, into one room. You, as the hotel, have just no idea because they don't have a stem. I'm gay. You don't know. So treat them like you want to be treated as a person when you travel somewhere. Just ask your clients what they want and then, and that is friendliness. Just, and uh, yeah, so you don't need to be specifically gay. And also what's very important for gay people, they want, don't want to be treated as gays or lesbians. They want to be treated like any other tourist. They want to be equal. And they want to feel welcome. And not want to feel welcome like everybody else. And that's what it's all about. How big is the uh, global LGBT market? The big... Uh, I don't know if we I don't have global figures. I think we have uh, figures from different markets, like the U.S. market or the German or European markets. And you can usually see, in, uh, say, in Western countries like U.S. or Germany, it's up to uh, eight, five to eight percent of the population is gay or lesbian. And so when we talk about Germany, it's like 82 million people. So we say we have up to six to eight million gay and lesbian people in Germany. And they spend over, uh, I think it's over 20 billion euros every year in tourism. And they spend this anyway. So if a destination like India is working in this market or not, this money is spent, definitely. And you can, and India can take part of it and go, okay, we want, have, want to have some of these pink euros, or we don't. But the people spend this money anyway. In the U.S., I have some numbers here. The annual economic impact of LGBT travelers is around $65 billion in the U.S. alone. So. Has any study been done on uh, individual spendings? How high uh, a normal uh, average uh, LGBT community? Some figures uh, from the Tourism Board of Philadelphia. 
uh, there had been a, a study and they found out that every dollar which was invested in gay tourism marketing brought a direct return of investment of $153. Every dollar, $153. And it went to hotels, shops, restaurants, sightseeing. In terms of marketing, uh, what should a destination do to uh, target its market? I think, I, think this, yeah. I think two important things. Uh, first of all, when you, when you start in this market, you have to check your destination. So you really need to create products. What do we have for that market? And when, you come, when it comes to India, there is a lot. India has a lot for this market. You have cultural tourism, you have beach destination, you have shopping, you have dining, you have all these things, the things that is important for, for the gay tourism. And I think you have to identify your products, create products for this market. And for example, it's not just to have a nice hotel, a five-star hotel. No, it needs to be, for example, it needs to be close to the beach or a very good access for shopping, because shopping is number two in, in uh, spending of money for, uh, for gay tourists. And then, of course, you have to, on the other side, you have to create, create awareness of your destination. But I said, these gay and lesbian tourists we have globally, they all travel already. So, and nobody waits for India, definitely nobody. They go to other destinations. And when you see my community in, in Munich or in Germany, when I say, oh, I go to India for a conference, oh, what are you doing in India? They have, the, the knowledge about India is less to poor what we have in Germany. It's also in the gay community. We know nothing about India. They have no idea that India is such a huge country with 1.2 billion people in India. We, have no, we don't have that in our mind. And they would never have an idea to travel to India, never. So that means when you do marketing in, in those countries like Germany, you have to create awareness for India that it is a great country to come to, that you have great products for this market. And for, for example, what is also very important for the gay market is wellness, wellness tourism. Ayurveda is a very important thing for gay tourism. Gay people spend a lot of money, gays and lesbians. So Ayurveda is the perfect thing for Kerala in India or in Goa, whatever, perfect. But nobody, for example, knows this in Germany in the gay market. They think when it comes to Ayurveda tourism, they think, Oh, we have to go to Sri, Sri Lanka. That is where they, uh, where they do uh, Ayurveda because Sri Lanka did a lot of uh, marketing in Ayurveda. Not especially in the gay market, but the gay people think about Sri Lanka when it comes to Ayurveda, not about India. And this had, would, you, yeah, would need to be changed when, when India is do something in a market like Germany or the US. I mean, Nepal, for instance, you all know that in Nepal it was also the, the uh, anti discrimination law was also. Um, uh, productive, so uh, they started a, a huge uh, campaign and on Nepal Tourism Board, the, the website for Nepal Tourism Year 2011, you can find packages, special packages in the Himalayas, wedding packages and so on. They are very uh, progressive um, because it is, you have to, the destinations have to support it. And the, I think the tourism boards, they really have to think about uh, what they can do for the market and to have to, you have, can download a guide to uh, where to go, which spots are very uh, important to see and all this stuff, you know. Nepal has done a great job now, I think. Uh, I think you said you've spoken about LGBT tourism in, in Delhi once. Is that the only time or are there more seminars? That was, that was the first seminar was in Delhi, in January yeah. during Satya, where we conducted it. What is the kind of reception about that? Sorry? What is the kind of reception about that? Response. Um, Response. There was no offense at all. It was, uh, we just had a, a very good uh, audience and it was covered by the Times of India and Delhi, positively. And since then, a lot of people ask uh, how they can get a slice of the market, actually. Yes. So we had uh, uh, new members, uh, IG, we had new companies, Indian companies become members of IGLTA, the International Travel Association, gay and lesbian. No, you also must say because of the uh, workshop we had at Sattel, we got a lot of uh, media response worldwide because of that, definitely. Yeah. And now we get really, because. Uh, it comes in, in the media, in Germany, in the gay media, in the US, everywhere that India reached now out for the gay market and I thought, okay, India's reaching out for the gay market. Nobody's doing anything here right now. Not really. Not really. Of course, there are some hotels, some tour operators who already work in the backs to, to, uh, 
to try to create products and get tourists. But officially, nobody works in gay tourism right now in India. Nobody. But there is a huge interest. There is, but there, there is, is worldwide. There is a huge interest in all, all the uh, media. They cover this and they think, oh, it's a great opportunity that India opens its doors for gay tourism. So India got a, a very a lot of uh, positive uh, media coverage because so of how that. How bad is the setback which happened yesterday? Hmm? How bad is the setback which happened yesterday? You have to not present a paper. It's out in the media. How bad is the setback? For for us or for who? For us. For for the I mean, it's going around the world. Well, I think sorry. I think you really have to. I I, I do not interfere in in, in in local politics. But I think a discussion like in, in the statement which we had from the tourism board. The discussion is good to have. It's always good to talk about things, and there should be a discussion uh, in, in your country, especially uh, how to handle yeah this kind of diversity tourism. And it's always good to 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 create awareness and to speak about things because that's always the first step. So I don't think that it's a, it's a harm, but it's good to provoke at least discussions and to speak about certain things. And the and the point is, gay tourism is there anywhere. If India goes into this market or not, it is there and it will happen. And India clo can close his eyes. That's okay. But then the business is going to other countries. Yeah, and the there way. are already two that's operators in, 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 yeah, in India who have those special packages, yeah. and they do a great job. They yeah. expand really, and yeah. uh, they do all kinds of things: monsoon weddings and uh, Ayurveda packages, um, all kinds of things. And they go to Rajasthan. And they go to, to the Taj Mahal, and uh, you know because it's in, in the first line it's a cultural tourism. Uh, LGBT clients who come to India are going to, to do it. That's that's all. And they uh, do have it. you and spoken and about have wellness. you spoken about this in other Asian countries? Um, for instance, I know that the Philippines are discussing it now because they also they want there is a city I, I forgot the name which where they really the the city wants to promote itself as gay friendly. And they're having discussions in the moment uh, with the different parts of the society to see whether they want it or not. But it is in the discussion. And um, yeah, as I said, Nepal, uh, but you have But also what very big is in, in Asia, it's uh, Thailand. Thailand has a huge uh, gay tourism. But the, the tourist board of Thailand is, uh, Thailand is also doing anything in that market. This is just what we saw worldwide, that some destinations had, um, that there was uh, the development of gay tourism by itself. For example, also in Europe we have like Gran Canaria, the island of Gran Canaria, or Mykonos in Greece. It was over the years, uh, just a lot of gay people traveled there and became a very popular gay destination. But those tourist boards did anything there. And there was also Thailand, a lot of people go to Thailand. Because it's very, probably it's because it's a very liberal country and that was developed itself. The Asian market is just a little bit closed still, well, which we, everybody yeah. has to accept. But um, uh, in general, I mean, whole of Europe, the whole the city, the city marketing, because of LGBT tourism, uh, is, they love cities. So there is Vienna, Antwerp, <coughs> Las Vegas, uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, um, <coughs> so many cities, Madrid, uh, oh, Canary Islands, and uh, Brazil, of course, um, Stockholm. Um, well, Iceland, Iceland Air, everybody's really kept trying to get into the market internationally. It's such a huge trend, you can't imagine. What special needs do LGBT clients have that you need to talk about this? They're just people like anybody else. 